On this episode of Junos Connect, you've probably heard a lot of news about Juniper's 321 data center architecture. Today, we'll sit down with two experts from the team to learn more about the technology behind it. Hi everyone, I'm Kara Suboy. Welcome to Junos Connect, your one-stop video source for all things Junos. Patrick Wickstrom is in Tokyo working with the team on our Japanese JNet community. Lucky guy, but he'll be back next month. In the meantime, here's what's happening around Juniper. Junos 10.2 is here. Some of the highlights of this latest release include an EX4500 line of high-density 10 gigabit Ethernet switches, a compact MX80 3D universal edge router, and now group VPNs on the branch SRX series services gateways. Visit Juno Central for all the technical details on 10.2. And while you're there, take a look at the new Juno's monitoring and troubleshooting day one booklet. It's available for download now. And for those of you considering charging up your career, we've archived the live text chat with our training and certification team. There's some great Q&A about getting your Juno certification. And of course, be sure to check out all the new resources on Juno Central. Are you looking to reduce your data center footprint? Stick around, find out how virtual chassis fabric technology can help you do just that. The new network is going to demand a new kind of IT professional. It's going to demand your creativity, your vision, your knowledge. Junos will be the platform for new network innovation, and it'll be more important than ever to keep pace. Getting Junos certified is going to give you the skills you need. It'll help you see your new network vision through. It'll set you apart from the competition. Juniper's Fast Track program is designed to help you get started at your convenience. The new network is about you. Welcome back to Junos Connect, your video source for all things Junos. I'm Kara Suboy. Like many of our viewers, your data center is probably growing. Great for business, but a tough assignment without introducing lots of layers, boxes, and operational complexity. Joining us today is Arch Nikitan, Director of Product Management, to talk about Juniper's virtual chassis technology and how it can help you take the complexity out of your network. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, we've talked a lot about the 321 architecture, but tell us about the 3 to 2 portion of that. So if you look at data center networks of today, uh, they are typically designed in a three-tier hierarchy, mm -hmm. which comprises of the access layer, the aggregation layer, and the core layer. And a three-tier design is typically necessary if you want to build a scalable data center that can connect thousands of servers. Uh, Juniper, with its virtual chassis technology, is able to simplify the network design uh, from a three-layer design to a two-layer design, hence the term three to two. Three to two. How does it work? I mean, what exactly is this virtual chassis we're talking about? Uh, so virtual chassis is a Juniper fabric technology that allows interconnection of a number of smaller systems together into a larger scalable system. Mm -hmm. Now, the members of a virtual chassis work together as a single large system, similar to what a chassis would do. They have a single configuration file, they have a single operating image, they have a single uh, way of management. And, but at a much a smaller fraction of the cost as one would pay for a chassis system. So it sounds like the virtual chassis obviously simplifies. What are some other benefits that it has on the data center? So with virtual chassis, you're also minimizing the number of devices we can manage by up to 10, uh, uh, 1 in 10. So about you know, a significant reduction here. Mm -hmm. And with the benefits we have talked about earlier, um, with virtual chassis technology, customers can see as much as 30% reduction in TCO with the Juniper virtual chassis technology. Uh, we are, of course, also extending the reach of virtual chassis, not only within the access layer, but also in the aggregation core layer, which offers additional benefits in the enterprise. And benefits beyond the data center and into the network? Yes. Uh -huh. Members from the team will take a deeper dive into the virtual chassis fabric technology in a live webcast on June 24th. Be sure to register. Seats are limited. You just heard about 3 to 2. Coming up next, 2 to 1 with Andy Ingram. Hey there, Junos community. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you think about Junos Connect, Junos Central, and the Juniper community. Email us or post your questions and thoughts in the comments area of any of our social media properties. Remember, this is your community and this is your show. Welcome back to Junos Connect. I'm Kara Suboy. Ever dream about operating an entire data center network with just one point of management? Well, Juniper's 321 data center architecture is all about helping you make that vision a reality. Andy Ingram, VP of Product Marketing for Fabric and Switching Technologies, is here to show you how it works. Welcome, Andy. Thanks for having me. Now, Archna talked three to two. 
and uh, she introduced the idea of fabric technology. Why don't you explain what problem fabric technologies are trying to solve? We see three shortcomings in a typical data center network. We see that they're too slow, mm -hmm. they're too complex, and they're inefficient. Too slow because you have multiple tiers you have to traverse. Each time you go through another hop, you're adding latency. You're, you're basically replicating the same Ethernet processing that every switch does. Ideally, you would only have to be able to do that once in a data center network. Second, it's too complex, and it gets more complex as you scale it up. Why is that the case? Because each switch in the tree structure is an independent autonomous device that needs to be managed. But more complex than that, I actually have to manage the interactions between the switches. This is the, the VLANs and the, the protocols that you have to manage. And as you scale up a network, it gets more complex. Why? Because the number of interactions increases. Simple formula, n where n equals the number of managed devices, the number of switches, n times n minus 1 over 2 gives you the number of interactions. And as it gets bigger, it gets more complex. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it's inherently inefficient because we have all these ports. The most expensive ports are spent connecting switches to switches. Not the servers or the storage to the network, but switches. And then with spanning tree, I can disable half the bandwidth. And it just seems to be highly inefficient. So before we go any further, though, why don't you explain exactly what are fabric technologies for those of us who don't know? So we actually have a very explicit definition of a fabric. Fabric is one of those terms that gets used by lots of people. So we, we actually look inside of a switch to see what a fabric is. Because every switch has a fabric. And you find that there's an aspect around the control plane and the data plane. So looking at the data plane, what you find inside a switch is that every port is directly connected to every other port. And there's a single lookup. So we call it a flat any-to-any -any network or data plane. And on the control plane, well, there's a single consciousness around a switch, a single control plane. So that not only do I manage it as a single device, but every port shares the same state stayed around the configuration of the ports, stayed around the forwarding tables, the MAC addresses, and so forth. And what you again get is a, something that's very simple to manage. There's no spanning tree inside a switch. I don't worry about those things. I define it once and so forth. Yeah. But a single switch doesn't scale across the full data center. Mm -hmm. So what we call a network fabric is the concept of taking the goodness of a single switch mm -hmm. and combining multiple physical switches together to have them behave as one and have that, that single flat data plane and that single control plane, but across multiple physical devices. And we do that today with virtual chassis, mm -hmm. and that helps us get from three to two because we have multiple fabric instances that we interconnect with a, a shared core. But we also will use that to get to one. And where is this all headed? What is the end point for our customers? Well, it's really the case where, in my formula, n equals one. Yeah. This is the Stratus project. The concept of taking a network fabric and scaling it across the largest data centers you'd ever want to build, mm -hmm. and being able to interconnect all the devices, not just the servers, but the servers and the storage, the appliances, the routers, and so forth, through a single network. And for a virtualized data center, that's exactly where you want to be. And it has that single flat any-to-any -any connectivity, so a single lookup and send it anywhere in the network, and it's managed as a single device, yeah. a single large Juno switch, if you will. One point of management. Single point of management. Impressive. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks so much, Andy. Appreciate the time. My pleasure. If you like what you've heard, remember to register for our upcoming live webcast on June 24th. Well, that's it for this show. Before I sign off, I'd like to tell you about a special giveaway. Be one of the first 20 people to post a question about virtual chassis or the 321 architecture, and we'll send you a JNet mobile mouse pad. Simply add your question to the Junos Connect thread. Thank you so much for watching. For Patrick Wickstrom, I'm Kara Suboy. We'll see you next time right here on Junos Connect.